up next, we have our first um, remote presenter. So, no, not Word. God bless America. Um, uh, let me just make sure that I know what the heck I'm talking about. Uh, all right, computer, do the thing that I tell you to do. Do the thing. Thank you. All right, so we got Jen Diamond. Uh, can we try to do the thing with the slides there? Can we see if Jen can hear? Can, can, can we hear Jen? Hello, good morning, hey. Pittsburgh. Oh my goodness, it worked! <laughs> I, um, this is a 15 minute talk and I will, I will let Jen get started, thank you. Hi, this is exciting, I'm in LA. It's 8.07 in the morning here. Good morning, <laughs> good afternoon. So, I'm gonna move my little picture. So, um, all right, let me, okay. So I'm Jen Diamond. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I am a developer at the UCLA Library. I came to the library from the world of startups where Agile is a daily practice. Um, I was very fortunate to be mentored by Pivotal Labs who are top of the game uh, consultants. Pivotal is where many large enterprises and I learned best practices in the extreme programming flavor of Agile. Uh, the team I am on is building a digital repository. This is a large, important, risky project for the library, and it has been successful, largely due to the use of our agile practices. So I came to the library when Lisa McCauley and Josh Gomez were bringing agile practices and the UCLA library together. Um, let me start um, by saying that this talk, um, I'm assuming a base knowledge of Agile. So if you're not familiar with Agile or you just want to know more, there's an excellent book you can read called Agile Samurai. Um, it steps out every little bit of Agile and um, there's tons of resources online. And you can always ask me anything you want because I'm Agile cheerleader. So what does Agile success look like for us? Well, um, we met our goals every sprint. We met our goals every phase. We delivered on time and our stakeholders were happy. So how did Agile help our team become successful? I asked my teammates, how has Agile personally changed the way you work on projects for the library? My coworker, Steven Gernick says, Using Agile, we've created a safe space for us to learn, share, and grow as a team. So to avoid the common pitfalls and difficulties of transitioning to Agile, um, we hired an outside consulting firm, Data Curation Experts, um, was hired to help lead our team, um, both in learning and um, in implementing the software um, implementing the software we had selected for the project. They also helped guide our team in learning agile practices, and the team was given training throughout the project. We had a week-long uh, Ruby and Rails training uh, through by Notch 8 out of San Diego, and we received specialized training in San Vera by DCE, uh, the data curation experts, and hands-on learning through pair programming with DCE, and uh, as we went along and built the project. Um, we also worked with Carbon5, who's here in Los Angeles, on the development of our design and user experience. Um, they helped continue our Agile training, and they also trained our designer in their UX practices. Uh, we are still encouraged to actively learn. Every Friday now we have um, the full day to work on tutorials and training so we can get ready for the next thing we have to learn, like Vue, which we're all very excited about. Um, so Stephen Garnick goes on to say, now that we use Agile, it's no longer a mystery what my colleagues are working on. This refers to transparency, which is part of Agile, to be transparent about your work. Transparency enables us to make good decisions. 
Um, it reduces the project risk, especially risk to the quality and the value of your project, your product, uh, sprint planning, stand-ups, um, retrospectives and demos allow everyone in the team to know exactly what's going on at all times and the risk of delivering anything less than what's expected is lowered significantly. So we'll start with our retrospective. In the retrospective, the team reflects on how to become more effective and adjust accordingly. For our retrospectives, we use an online tool called Retrium because many members of our team are remote, even if remote just means they're in another building on campus. Um, the main thing to concentrate on a retrospective is improvement and not blame. So we've moved our retro around and we've tried a lot of different methods based on what we needed at the time. Um, certain games, different retrospective games can draw out different ideas. Um, currently now we do a, a quick mini retro at the beginning of our sprint planning meeting. We do a quick list of what went well, what needs improvement, and make an action list of um, what we can do. Uh, and uh, we do a longer retro at the end of each phase. They've also helped us narrow our focus and they've really helped us identify issues and take action to solve them before they become bigger problems. Um, at the end, we do what uh, do you want to stop, what start, what do you want to stop doing, what do you want to continue doing. Um, the demo helps keep the project transparent to the stakeholder by showing the progress that has been made and it creates an environment for feedback and discussion between the stakeholders and the team. We've handled the demos differently throughout our, product, our project. At the end of our phase one, we did a showcase for our stakeholders where they tried out our product. Um, during phase two, we did a demo after every sprint and after phase three, we did a video of our progress and a Q&A session. Throughout every phase, a progress report and a video were made to keep the stakeholders up to date with our progress. Feedback was gathered and incorporated into our sprint planning in the form of new tickets. Um, so Andy Kohler says, um, as uh, well as making the process of development transparent, that daily stand-ups help us stay on track. So every day as a team, we walk through the tickets in the sprint and discuss how they're going. Uh, we read through all the tickets and we discuss what is done, what needs to be deployed, what's in progress, and how far along it is. If a ticket's blocked in any way, um, and are there any questions about the ticket, then it's over. We, it takes about five minutes for our team. We keep it quick and um, this isn't the time to discuss solutions. It's just the time to um, keep everyone informed about what we're doing. Um, it's great to see uh, tickets move incrementally from the to-do column over to the done column. If a ticket's blocked, then um, for some reason, then it can be marked for discussion instead of just being ignored. Um, we all know exactly what's being worked on as the sprint progresses um, and what's left to complete. And if it seems possible to get it all done by the end of the sprint or if we need to reduce our scope. Done for us means deployed. So Dara Cole says that Agile, Agile has moved our projects from being vertically integrated long-term personal endeavors to building small pieces in a team environment. Our team does a lot of pair programming and we collaborate on solving tickets because a problem shared is a problem halved. The benefits of pair programming are, uh, are fewer coding mistakes, shared best practices, shared knowledge, better code, two brains are better than one brain, three brains are greater than two brains. Um, it's easier to keep on going 
Um, it's harder to procrastinate. Onboarding devs is faster. Team leads can mentor the other devs and there's good morale because it's social and collaborative. Our team does a lot of pair programming. We've dedicated a time block every day where we all join a Zoom room like this and we work together on tickets. Sometimes we might not use it for a few days and just work on our own, but we all know that if we have any questions, we can just Slack our teammate, jump on the Zoom, share our code, and walk through our blocking points so no one stays stuck for days. It's amazing what another set of eyes, ears, brain, and a different perspective can add. Uh, it's also easier to focus and it's fun. Hardy Pottinger says, the notion of the smaller the better has a big impact on how I approach every task in my life, not just the coding I do for work. This touches on incremental progress. So we plan our requirements um, and goals for the, uh, the, and the scope for a phase. A phase consists of about eight to 14 sprints, depending on the amount of work involved. And our sprints um, consist of a two week time period. For us, that seems like the perfect amount of time to get work done, get feedback and readjust. For one uh, sprint is about 50 points, um, which is about 10 points per developer. Uh, Well-written tickets are the key to completing all the tickets in the sprint on time. We make sure our tickets have very clear requirements. Um, we make sure they have an acceptance criteria for completeness, uh, relevant snapshots, links, and assets. Because if the ticket is written clearly, then the person doing the ticket won't have to contact multiple people to clarify it. Um, and that saves time and frustration for everyone. I'm sure everyone here has dealt with uh, the b going back and forth to get the requirements you need. Um, we've all incrementally approved on writing our tickets um, in good part because of feedback we've um, discussed in the retro. So my supervisor, Josh Gomez, uh, says be realistic and strategic in bigger picture planning and reasonable scope is a necessity to succeed. As the old saying goes, good, fast, cheap, pick two, because you can't have them all. Um, so Josh believes that um, the two to concentrate on are quality and time, and that by reducing your scope, you'll have enough time to create a quality product. Kevin Clark says, our switch to Agile has translated into less anxiety about hitting important deadlines and improved productivity. This is partially due to our use of testing. As Bill Nye, the science guy says, one test is worth a thousand expert opinions. We have 96% test, test coverage on our code. So when we add a feature, we can feel confident if we break something, we're gonna know about it. We also continuously deploy. Um, automated continuous deployment is still a goal for us, um, but we deploy our code incrementally as we add features. Um, so if something does break, it's easy to roll back um, to working code while we fix what is broken. And then we can just uh, de deploy again once everything is better. Anita Malark says, being open and responsive to change allows me to be a more effective developer. Um, so we've had to adapt to changing requirements throughout the project. This is when it helps to have a good product owner because our product owner is directly in the loop of planning at all times and we only plan two week sprints at a time. We've been uh, able to easily adapt to uh, changes as they occur. 
um, the product owner's role is vital to the success of the project. If the product owner is not involved in the project, the process, then the customer will most likely not like the result, and they'll have more work will have to be done. Uh, the our product owner is uh, Lisa McCauley. Uh, she's very hands-on and involved in the process. Um, she spearheaded us bringing Agile practices into this project. Um, so following Agile practices and values has been so successful for us that even though our project was large, important, and risky, we met our goals every sprint, we met our goals every phase, we delivered on time, and our stakeholders were happy. Lisa McCauley, um, our head of the UCLA Digital Library Program and our product owner, says before Agile, our work was chaotic and disjointed. We had great people and great projects, but it felt like we were always pushing boulders uphill. I felt like I couldn't deliver reliably to my stakeholders. Now I have a team that can tell me what's possible and I can set goals that I can count on achieving. The team produces working software that is put into use immediately and our stakeholders are happy. The end. Thank you.